Okay, so here's how I make videos. I have a topic I want to talk about. I start recording. I don't plan on saying a lot about the topic in question, so I introduce the video, saying that it will be a short one. I then get lost in my own thoughts, and I feel compelled to share all of those thoughts with you. The video ends up being over 20 minutes after all. The end. Hello everybody, and welcome back to Shapes.io. I am Bins, and this is part 6 in my Butnam series. I made my little disclaimer because I feel like I don't have a lot to talk about today, but I guess you're in a better place to judge based on the duration of the video than I am at the time of recording. Today's topic is closely tied to what we spoke about in part 5, which was the difference between a zero signal and a null value or lack of signal on a wire. Now. After finishing that video, I remembered there was something else I would have wanted to show you, but I forgot. So I'll, quick, I'll quickly annex that here if you don't mind. I showed you several ways to transform signals from A to B, but there is one more item I wanted to add to that list. So let me find an empty spot on the map again, and let's, let's quickly get that out of the way. Okay, for example, here I showed you several methods to, um, to transform signals from one to the other. But um, suppose we have a shape signal and we are using, let's say, an unstacker. Okay. What the unstacker does is it outputs either a shape, if it has one, or if it doesn't, it outputs a null signal. If I cut this wire right here, thank you. Um, then the wire connected to that will have a null. Now suppose that we're going to hook this up to a machine that we would want to receive either a shape or a zero as an input. Then we need, uh, we need to build a little module that either lets the shape pass or it transforms the null into a zero. And the way we can do that very simply is by uh, forking, splicing this line connecting a NOT gate and then connecting a transistor with a zero signal to that NOT gate. And there you are, Bob's your uncle. If we don't have a value uh, coming out of the unstacker, then the signal is immediately transformed to a zero. And if we do get a signal, then that signal is just the signal that we're getting. Okay, that's quickly one, what I wanted to show you regarding regarding that. Now, back to today's video. In today's video, I specifically would like to talk to you about sustaining signals or locking signals in place. You know, just like a just like an electric wire, if you run electricity through the wire, then uh, whichever machine you connect to that will receive electricity. And if you cut the electricity, then the machine will stop receiving electricity. That's how simple it is. But there is a way to uh, sustain whatever signal you have on a wire, even though you are cutting the feed. And today I want to um, I want to have a look at that with you. So let's get back to another spot on the um, on the map. And before we do that, let me first make a little setup here that we will need later. Okay, just a second. Okay, there we go. We're gonna get back to this. Uh, first, let me show you the actual module. And the module is ridiculously simple. Okay, you take wires two by three, you connect a, um, a transistor to that, and you connect a transistor in front. And optionally, you can connect a transistor in, uh, in, uh, at the back as well. And this is a super simple design. First, I had a more complex design and I turned to the Discord and it was user Skimnerfy who showed me this super basic design. Now, um, he did say that it wasn't his own. I don't know who came up with this, but this is so simple 
that a part of me does feel ashamed that I didn't come up with this myself. I needed someone else's help to uh, to show me this. So essentially, what this does is um, let me let me let me replace that with a button. Okay. If we connect a signal, let's say the blueprint shape, because I have it handy and ready, we connect a, belt, a, a sorry a display to that. We push the button. The signal is allowed to pass, and it shows in the display. We cut the feed, and the signal is sustained, rendering this button useless, right? It doesn't do anything anymore. Okay, and you may be... You may need this in situations where you have a, you know, a changing input, for example, or you don't have a constant input, but you want a certain machine that is connected to that input to receive a constant value, a constant input. So either if you have like intermittent values here or you have alter alternating values, you may want to capture a certain value and as soon as you have that signal you want whatever's on this wire right here to become irrelevant capture the signal and carry that signal onward to your next machine okay um for example there we go uh for example this thing right here i made a little module that i can enable with buttons and it's going to uh, output stars of varying colors, right? So uh, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple, white, screen freeze, hello, thank you. And finally, um, uncolored. Now suppose that these values, they, they cycle on this wire. We will get back to how you can create a cycling mechanism on your wires okay but let's just assume that these wires these signals rotate so first you get uh, the red yellow green blah 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 it moves down the line and after gray we get we get red again something like that and suppose that we would want to capture one of these values let's say the the purple the purple star okay that's that's what we want as soon as as this wire contains a purple star we want to cut the feed and we want the purple star to be to be output to the next machine. That's our setup, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to recreate what we just did with the transistor. Okay, there we go. Very important is the transistor that goes in front because that's going to be the, the, the building or the, the, the unit that is going to either allow the feed to pass or cut it. Okay, so if we connect that and first of all, there is another thing I want to show you, a, a trap you should be wary of, and that is, that is, this is directly related to last video, and that is that a null signal is not a zero signal. Okay, so what happens, um, these modules output uh, null, they put output a null signal if none of them is active, okay? But if we simply hook this up like so, we enable a signal, we now get the, the red star, we disable that again, now we're capturing the red star, okay? Why? Because this signal is sustained and it overrides the null signal that comes out of this, uh, out, of, uh, out of these transistors otherwise, right? So now, with one click of a button, you have rendered your machine useless. So, we're going to connect the module I just showed you. If we turn that signal into a zero signal, then we should be... Yeah, now, we, now we've reset the machine. So let's see if this works. Red? No, it doesn't work yet. That's why we need the transistor. Exactly. That's why we need the transistor. So. Now. Now we have, uh, we have successfully cut the feed. So, red. Turn it off again. If my machine would let me, thank you. Then yellow, then 
green, cyan, blue, purple, and white and uncolored. So, now let's suppose, as we said before, that we would want to cut the signal as soon as we have a purple star on the wire. How can we do that? Well, we could do that with a comparing unit, like so, like so, and like so. And now we are going to connect the output of that with this transistor right here. And we're going to do that with a NOT gate. So this means that whichever signal we get is allowed to pass. Now let's make it smaller, a little bit more elegant. There we go. It is allowed to pass, except it will cut the signal immediately as soon as we get a purple star. Let's look at this. Red. No, not sustained. Yellow, not sustained. Green, not sustained. Cyan, not sustained. Blue, not sustained. White, not sustained. Purple, not uh, sorry, uncolored, not sustained. But purple, it is sustained, right? Here is the. This display shows the actual uh, s uh, signal that we have, the input, and this one shows the output. So these buttons, none of these buttons, now perform any trick anymore. We could do with these buttons whatever we want. The signal of the purple star will be sustained. And this seamlessly brings me to a side remark, the sidebar, a side note that I want to I want to make about this. This is how you can sustain a signal and how that how you can apply that in practice and make it useful for your machines. We will still revisit that topic uh, later. Okay, and in, in, in videos that are that are to come. But the problem is you have now captured this signal forever, right? <laughs> you have captured this signal forever and you cannot reset this, right? If I now feed another signal, then you know we have this we have this endless loop of the signal right here. So how can we reset that in case we needed that? And this brings me back to what I said about a, uh, a zero and any other, other value being conflicting values in my last video. So, we have the purple star. Okay. Um, let's take two transistors again. Gosh, my machine is so slow today. There we go. There we go. So, I told you that zero and any other non-zero value are conflicting values. They will, will, they will create this conflict on the wire. If we, t if we uh, remove that constant signal, then uh, this transistor will output a null. This will output uh, our purple star. And the purple star will take over, and that is the signal that is carried on. So while the conflict is usually never desirable, in this in this case, we can actually um, we can actually exploit that. Okay, so let's make another uh, transistor here, and assume we're gonna I'm gonna use a button now, just for being you know for simplicity's sake. But imagine. Instead of a button, we have like a kind of reset module, right? Another wire that is triggered by another module. And if we output a one now, then that zero will be allowed to pass. And it will immediately conflict with the purple star on the wire. And this will effectively reset my machine. Boom. There we go. And now we've reset the machine. If we, we could capture the purple again, if we want, and boom, we reset it like so. If we capture the purple, then all other uh, inputs will be, you know, without consequence. It won't do anything. And boom, there, here's how we reset it. Now, this is, again, I, I, I make these very simple setups, right? Because my hopes are that if I keep it simple to begin with and you understand the principles, then at a later stage, when we see how these mechanisms are applied in the machine in this huge monstrosity of a thing, it will be more transparent, easier to understand, and hopefully 
that will also mean it'll be more fun to watch. So, I guess this is it already. A signal sustain method in shapes.io that is definitely very useful. I don't know if it if it is obligatory for building a team amp, but I I definitely required it for the way I decided to handle my machine. Because what you already know by now is that um, you know whenever my machine receives a new input, it will cycle through various candidates. I told you that already, and I used a similar capturing mechanism as soon as we see that we get the correct shape produced. So even though the inputs may still be trying shenanigans, you know, different stacking combinations, as soon as the, as the machine spots like, oh, this is the one that works, it will capture that signal and it will shut off, it will cut off the feed that runs into my, um, into my assembly units, right? I can already lift that tip of the veil. So, once again, I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope to see you again in part 7, and I wish you all a lovely day. Take care. Bye-bye.